demand over a pop song is killer. That's the greatest Radiohead songs in the world. Those are the best police songs. The ones you remember have those. In the 90s, they exploited it, you know? <laughs> they, you know, Take On Me by AHA, so my favorite chord of all time. It's one of the three notes we've said. Take on me. It's those beautiful things that take an extra second when somebody's going,
Uh, John, <laughs> why are you already in? First, it's Wyndham's good. But, but when you look at him, look at his mind, look at, look at his mind. <laughs> look at his eyes. He's got you. So go ahead and play those chords again. I, I don't even know where they were. I don't, I don't know. <laughs>
right the opposite of what you're tired of. And for me, I'm tired of this part of the guitar, the middle part of the music. It's just after a while. <laughs> it's not this. That I can that I can accept and you know, it's these it's these things. It's the guts of it that really start annoying me. <laughs> it's never in tune, and it's always somehow the way a guitar is tuned up. It's not truly sympathetic. There's always something boing 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 boing. So now what I want to do is I sit for hours and I go.
many of these people are my students. Uh, one of the things that I want you to keep watching about uh, John uh, is how when, when he plays, he's instantly in time. When he speaks, does he use his hands at all when he talks? Uh, is he molding out what he says every time he says something? Is he in flow and in motion all the time, and does it make him attractive to watch? And the answer is, you bet it does. His internal time is so good. It's as good as any I've ever seen. And it gives you so much stability that then, so when he does one of those fancy licks, the fact of the matter is that he may be on it or off it. He may be hitting it or blowing it, but it doesn't matter because his internal time is so straight that he'll he'll find it again and find it right away. Do we have any guitar players here? Uh, anybody <laughs> loves Stevie Ray Vaughan? Listen always, always, always to the one. His respect for the one. What do you mean by respect? I'm not Where the one? Well, the rhythmic one. Okay, if okay. you're a guitar player, right? And you know. Right? You know. Yeah, but let's say you start that a lick later. You have a beat later. You're going to go. One. Right? His ability to, to always respect, when you, especially when you're playing alone, that this is. Right? Yeah. His ability to do that, even when he's playing, guitar players memorize licks in a, in a note sequence, not in a rhythmic idea. So that's why so many guitar players are just dead out of time. But if you always know that, you know, then you can adjust. And you never want to miss home base. You always have to make a time at home for dinner on one. Because if you don't, even if you play less guitar, the best guitar players, like Lightning Hopkins, is one of the greatest guitar players, he just sort of got, in a weird way, if, if, you know, where one was in a funny way. You know, John Schofield is such a great guitar player because he is sort of, he's crazy about where the, where the timing is. And he knows how to bend it. He knows how to bend notes in a way that's respectful of where the one is. But Stevie Ray Vaughan's guitar playing sort of set off uh, an entire generation of people who play the notes, but who don't really understand when you have to come back to that when you need to. And it's about adjusting are you, as, as a guitar player, are you dissecting it down to, like, are you subdividing it down to the, the lick, or are you subdividing it down to the note? And if you can subdivide it down to the note, then you can bend any of them all the time. And you're like, it's a matrix. Now right? you're bullet time. You're, that's where you want to get to. And that's when, about five, six years ago, I realized, oh, I get what people are saying about the metronome. About playing with the metronome. You know, or at least thinking about where that thing is. Because you're right, you can, you can, you can blow the lick. 99% of people won't know because they're just doing, mm -hmm. they're just doing this. When you decide that no, 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 I'm going to play this lick the way I know it, you're going to crush the, the time and you're going to have to borrow the next thing, the next bar line <coughs> to cover you on this one, and that's when people go. And it's, they may not know they're noticing it, but after a while, you get enough like, Ooh. and then you're just off, you just get going. So when you listen to Stevie play, it's consummate timing, and it's the right hand, the right hand thing. Too. Right hand stuff that I do all the time. It's just meant to practice staying in. Anybody questions that, look at REM, and I'm not knocking REM at all, but if you were to take away the huge visual presence that REM had throughout their career, thanks to great taste from, you know, Michael Cyprus and Art, he's an art man, he's a design guy, you kind of have a southern rock band. Yet, you can't call REM a southern rock band because of what gets called into your mind when you think about REM, you think about the monster color, think about automatic, for example. Think about the REM logo, the stickers, the field. Radiohead is at least 50% graphic design. It's, it's very suggestive. I think it's strange to have a logo for a solo artist. I think that's odd. I think being a solo artist is a very tricky thing because you are the brand. Mm -hmm. And it's an interesting thing to mimic, to sort of balance being the person and being the brand. Whenever I see a solo artist have a logo, uh, it's very odd. I have sort of a logo I've given into it. 
but I think that solo artists should have names. You know, the Eric Clapton logo, the name, the typeset from the old record, are it's gorgeous. It was all done by hand. It wasn't Illustrator back then. You know, the, you think of the old James Taylor records. They're beautiful typeface. You know, you think about greatest hits albums. White, my bar. This is what does it say? I've got nothing for you but my music. All I've got is my music, and don't you love that? How about that? Continuum is a very conscientious album cover. And to say, music by John Mayer. If you like it, you like it. Uh, this, this is what I do. So it's the name of my record on a gray background. It has a huge effect. If Nora Jones come away with me, Gene Iverson, let me see the album cover in your head, because it's a great album cover, where her in the daytime in a poppy field, it'd be a different album cover. If it was a painting, of a little girl, it, 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 the, the, the control that you have over image is fantastic. The control that you have over self-image, nothing. You just have, you have no control over self-image, but you have control over your product. For me, I run a funny line because my product is my name. So you have to, you have to really be careful. When I see like Daniel Powder as a DP and it goes together, I go, are you a person or are you a bank? On that on that theme, uh, Jimmy Buffett and uh, what Jimmy did, of course, was didn't brand Jimmy Buffett. He branded Margarita Bill, right? Yeah. And Jimmy Buffett, Margarita right. Bill. So right. Margarita Bill goes out there. It opens restaurants. It sells T-shirts. It sells beer. Right. It sells tequila. Uh, uh, and just right. as a quick aside, I asked Jimmy the other day about it about its growth per year. Uh, uh, <laughs> sure. Two hundred million. Dollars I'm sure. a year. I'm it, sure. it is a very serious brand name. I'm sure. Maybe it's very tricky to be a solo artist and sell merchandise. Someone asked me about five years ago. They said, "Do you want to start labeling the shirts? We can take off the American Apparel logo and you can make your own labels. You can have whatever logo you want on it." And I said, "No, I don't make shirts. <laughs> so I can't make shirts." Now, if I was a band, what are the things you can do in a band that you can't say? You you, you can say when you're in your band. My band, I'm in the greatest fucking band of all time. <laughs> you can't say, I'm the greatest fucking solo artist ever. Yeah. <laughs> you lose the tribe. You don't get the tribe. That's something I've lost in my life. I may have enough money to buy a Lamborghini, but I don't because there's no way to drive it here. Because I'm a solo artist. You know? So you figure it out. Buy yourself a nice watch, keep it under your cuff. Someone says they like it, you go, mm, thank you very much. <laughs> That's a solo artist. I think it's odd to sell merchandise inside of a record that you just bought. I've never wanted to do it. I never have. I think it's offensive to a fan. The overall concept and construct of what a fan is to open up an album cover that you just bought and have an opportunity to give more money. I don't like people who give me the opportunity to buy things as if they're helping me out. When Apple sends me an email and says, congratulations, you can buy it easier now. Well, great, but that's not something. You know, you're forgetting, I'm giving you this. You know, people doing you a favor by selling you something. They were the last one in the store. I'm going to sell it to you. Really? Will you let me give you money for this? <laughs> you know, it's, it's a funny balance. You know, yes, I'm selling you a ticket and it's going in my pocket, but we're going to both forget about that, both entertain each other, both win win. And that's why people keep coming back. So people say, I've been to 18 shows. They're not saying I've spent X amount of dollars. I don't know if they've ever added it up, but I've never added it up. But all I know is when I go buy a pair of sneakers, I get the long print. I'm never being a birthday. You worry about the short print out. You don't have any money. Check, check. Paper feed. Maybe I'll answer a couple more and then I'll get Yes. You surround yourselves yourself with amazing musicians. Uh, you know, Robbie, Dave Ryan, yeah, yeah, yeah. JJ, Steve Jordan's the man. The man. man. You know, uh, <laughs> he's the man. Yeah, he's, he's, he's the lead guy of the band. Uh, what is it about them that makes them so attractive to you to hire them? Um, they have narrowed what they do down to a pinhead's focus. That's why Annie Leibovitz is a great photographer because. You get there, and the photo shoot is 12 minutes long. I did a gap ad. The photo shoot was 12 minutes long. It's not easy. Because everybody there are doing huge processes. They're doing, you're just not seeing it. Because their process has become internalized. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing you can do. Right now, your process is externalized. Everything is externalized. But what you hope to do, and I'll tell you, the, the masters and the guys who keep, keep getting gigs and gigs and gigs, the guys who internalize their process,
process through their own language and they just show up. And they, what Steve Jordan's doing and what Pino's doing is they're running through crate after crate after crate of experiences and things they've done. And they're like random access like hard drives spinning up. Ooh, what record was this on? Ooh, maybe a Motown thing here. But they're not discussing it where it doesn't need to get discussed. And so that means that it's efficient. So efficient. We're all really efficient now. We get into the studio, and, and to, uh, to bring back to the question from the producer-songwriter, uh, you get efficient. If you already know this is a small song, you can go into the studio and say, don't load in drums. If you think it might be, you go load in the drums. <coughs> get the drummer for half a day, let's get Pino for two days, he's got to fly back to you. You're still in charge of the song, because you know it. And when you bring these people in, time is money, and time is of the essence. And you go, all right, here's what I want to try. Let's try out the bass. Instead of playing the bass for four, four times over the same track, Plug the bass in, let's get a sound. Think about your song. Try the moon bass. Yeah, yeah, it is the P bass. All right, let's try the P bass. Go. They're very efficient. They don't mess around. And everything they're doing is incredibly high quality. But their process is so innate that all you get is the flavor and the fun of playing, the excitement of playing. They don't share their process with you. And that's what I think makes a consummate musician. Robbie McIntosh is, when he's playing guitar, Robbie is one of the finest, I mean, truly finest guitar player I've ever heard in my life. When he's cycling through, he's going back to 13, and then he's going to 23, and then he's going all through his life, all the records that he's heard. And that's what you'll do with all, everything you've learned at Berkeley. When you're playing real time, writing a song, or you're playing a session, random access, just spinning through cognitive, synaptic bubbles, and they're bursting, and you move. But to, to the onlooker, all right, you want to run it? All right, give it to me. Right, which, 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 which fader am I on this one? Okay, just run the next one. All right, let's try What's happening is completely different than what's going on inside. And, and those guys are really, really good about knowing what's going to work and who they are as musicians. You know? And then it's a matter of getting the right musicians. I'm not going to get Steve Jordan on something that I don't think Steve Jordan can play his best on. You know, there's an Abe Laurel thing that Steve Jordan can do. You know, there's a Steve Jordan thing that Abe Laurel doesn't do. So you just start to learn the index. I also want to say, too, that I started a, a band with friends, because I couldn't find, you know, I mean, and I don't, I don't want to talk down about anybody I've ever played with, but it's a joy to play music with everyone I've played music with, but you will have that revolving door. You will go, drummer's not right, okay, drummer's right, guitar player's not right, and it just keeps revolving until you get the combination lock. It's like, do 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 beep. It's like a long sequence. You're, you're happy <laughs> on how to get it. So, I don't sit before you as a guy who just went straight into a race. He's gone through a lot of drummers, gone through a lot of guitar players, gone through a lot of bass players. Also, uh, uh, John, uh, uh, again, as I said earlier, um, nothing makes a good player sound better than playing uh, uh, great songs uh, played with a, uh, uh, with, a, with a terrific mind. Who here has an ensemble? Who do you play an ensemble? Outside of Did you solo in every class? They go around and everybody solo? Um, Pretty much the guy who the teacher says, uh, <coughs> I, I was at a, an ens ensemble today, and it, this is not about the quality of the band, it's sort of the quality of the arrangement. Not every single arrangement is perfect to solo over. You notice there's some ensembles that we walk away from and you zip up your instrument and you go, hmm. <laughs> it wasn't, why can't I just pull it out? Why couldn't I get it out? I'm a terrible fighter, I just can't access my fight. And really what it comes down to is what's the arrangement? You know, today, we were, we were playing over, uh... <laughs> that's it! <laughs> oh, no, 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 no,
<laughs> there are people I meet, I go out, I meet, I meet people, and, and, and I go, wow, she's a good-looking good girl. If you ever find yourself going back to zero, the blood pressure goes, mm. so what are you in town for? Mm. I'm in town for lifting a bone. <laughs> Am I a bad? No. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're in it, you're going, I know a better guitar player. Look at the arrangement, because you know what I can play over all day is, is one of the greatest four chords. Mm -hmm. Four chords ever written is you can play it all day. It's a beautiful circle, you know.
seller's market for song because, so I guess it's high. The market value is high, I should say, because <laughs> there's so few songs that, that really, truly connect with people. So much so that you can now feel radio giving in and going, we have to play, play new music. It's our format. We don't have enough new music. So we're just going to now begin to move down the list. And I think that's what we're starting to hear. And that's when they have these superstars put killer Rihanna is. They're going to put every track in that record out. That's mm -hmm. Because no one else is. Mm -hmm. It's just laughing at everybody. It's mm -hmm. that good. And it's really good. That happens to be really good. That Rihanna could win in any decade, any time. But the, the, the bands that have songs that. The American Idol band. They don't, they don't have. Uh, some of those rock songs. Are, you, if you really want to put a song out that just has a chorus that repeats something four times, you'll have a person do three songs that have choruses that repeat and lyrics that really connect, and you'll have guys at your show in three months. Uh, you just will. If you have anything better than a long, drawn-out chorus that doesn't... The worst chorus in the world to me, and I've said this a few times if anybody's doubling up on me, the chorus that just keeps going. Well, I'm waiting to the body, the body, the body. It's just a long <laughs> 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 It's just so. It's so. Yeah. That's what we're getting to because the more lyrics you write, the less editing you have to do. And isn't that easy to just bring, uh, take the editing sort of scope and just, just make it so wide and loose that you can just write whatever you want to write. But if you have, if I give you eight lines, you're going to take three weeks to write a line. If I give you 30 lines, you're just going to start going. Because that's, you know, your scope is large. You're going to sit all day. And I, it's getting very, very lazy. And I think Nashville started it. I think people who came in and interpreted, like Garth Brooks writing, Shania Twain writing, they misinterpreted it. Because it was verbose, but it still held its point. Yeah. They misinterpreted it, and it became this sort of lost in translation version of a lot of information.
little bit of harmonic leeway to yeah. get there. And that's what I've started to do. Just take those B sections down. I want to know where the chorus is. Nobody ever said you had too many chorus. That's too hooky. <laughs> Why did you always go straight to the hook? Why can't you just set it up? Nobody's ever said that. The best thing in the world is to have an artist come in and play a song that's too long. Because he loves his chorus so much. That's the easiest fix in the world. You go, hey, you got a really good problem I'm about to tell you about. Your chorus is killer and you know it too much. <laughs> if you want someone to hear that chorus more, let them watch the song. I hear it over to you. Because that's beautiful. Beautiful. The other thing I want to tell you, and I'll, I'll play you out with song. And this is sort of universal information. I also want to thank you, Livingston, and thank you guys for missing whatever you're missing and giving all this time. And it means a lot to sort of come back 10 years later and sort of reinforce more than I thought I was going to about what this school teaches. Um, the number one thing that will get you through life, that's gotten me through life, is to define your expectations. Everything you do, you must define, if not numerically, just the overall sort of virtue of what you want, your expectation for success to be. And if you can do that, then you have mapped out something very honest and authentic. Um, if you decide that you want to be a pop artist, you just want everyone to hear your song, I don't care. I just want to write the best song as I can and I want everyone to hear. You've now defined your expectation in a way that sort of says, if you've answered yes to this, then go to uh, page six. Um, and the page six says, okay, listen, you got to compromise. Now you got to compromise. You're going to be making music for the masses, so you're going to get taxated creatively 20% of everything you want. If you really want that, then that's what it's going to be. And if you answer no, the first, the first question was, well, what, what do you expect? Do you want to be a pop artist? You say, I don't like pop. I just want to write my music the way I want to, and I just want to express myself. Yes, that's great. But if you're saying that and you secretly want to be a pop artist, you will fail. And not only will you fail, but you'll be really unhappy. Really, really unhappy. If you can be honest. I sat across, across with someone one time. You don't know who they are, I promise. You, you can't assume who they are. Famous person. And uh, a friend of a friend, she said something so honest to me. Talking about the uh, next opportunity or she was upset because and she said, I just want people to love me. And I thought, so honest. I just everybody should live like that. I just want everyone, I just want people to love me. I just want people to like like my way. People like what I you know how many people give up their peace of mind, give up their dignity, give up everything in their life because they don't want to admit, I just I just, I just want to be loved. And everybody in this room wants to put a record out that everybody loves. I don't care who you are. Why would you not why would you say, I want to make money? Just that much. It doesn't even matter. The human instinct is to reach as many people as you can, but everybody has their compromise. I want to re I want to reach as many people as I can, but without doing something musically that's less. You know, say what you need to say. Is it benign? Of course, it's never going to write, but it worked for that movie. That movie is a Rob Reiner movie. It's a feel-good movie, and it's not. And at the time, I was really upset with the long chorus.